Well, this, uh, when I said that surface is, is uh, probably the most important, well, yeah, it, it is. But the second most important, brushes. The reason why is that at least if you are the kind of painter that I am, you're, you have, you know, the brushes are your contact point to the surface, and you have to have control over that. So, depending again upon the way you like to approach painting, how much paint you put on, put on the surface at one time, on all kind, a whole number of things, the brushes are are the things that give you the most feel, and the and the greatest degree of of um, accuracy and control. So, for me. These are the brushes that I use, which I'll be using through this process and what I try to use through every painting. Okay. Uh, my number one uh, universal brush, I go through tons of these things, uh, is this Ruby Satin Synthetic Round, number one, which means it's, pretty, it's not real small, but it's kind of small. But it's almost like using a piece of charcoal, but you can put actual paint on it, you know. And um, so I use the, I use this as my drawing tool, but as the as the process changes, you know, as I go through the process of the painting, I use this brush for different kinds of things on the painting. But uh, this is my probably my number one tool. Second number one tool. This this is the cream de la cream of paintbrushes. This is a Winsor Newton Series Seven number one sable watercolor brush. Uh, regardless of what uh, what people say, I, and I've tried every one of these guys, there's no better brush in the world than this right here. <clears throat> uh, if you want control and accuracy and reliability. They're very expensive, but eh. <clears throat> the flaps that I use when I'm using uh, uh, larger spaces, especially early on in a painting, I use a nice flat, a uh, sable flat. This is a short flat. I think they call it a, uh, it's a, called a bright shader. It's just a sort of a uh, stiff, controllable flat. And by stiff uh, and controllable, I mean it doesn't flop all around on the surface when you're trying to paint with it. You have some control. For me, I guess uh, you know I'm a little fussy. I don't know. I like to have control of this stick in my hand here and do what I want it to do. This brush has served that purpose. It's a little larger, uh, and then I go up to a larger flat when I'm using, doing larger areas. A lot of these things depend on the size of the painting you're working on. But the thing in common with all of these brushes, they're all soft. I don't, I'm never a guy who's, who's uh, enjoyed working with bristle brushes. Uh, it's been a very common, and there's, nothing, there's certainly nothing wrong. Most of the great paintings ever painted have been painted with bristle brushes, but I use sables. Uh, serves me, serves my technique. Okay? Um, the, other th uh, the other things that is very important to my particular process is uh, I like to sit and paint. I'm not a stand-up painter. I'm a, I don't mean, that's a funny thing to say, but I sit down while I paint. And, uh, which means in order to get back and look at the painting, um, to avoid having to having to get up every few minutes and look at the painting, I use a reducing glass, which is a, um, well, I'll show you later. I can't find it. Oh, it's in my pocket. Here we go. It's a reducing glass. I sort of never go anywhere without it. All it is is it's a non-distortive -distort uh, lens that instead of magnifying, it takes things away without distorting it. So I can give myself a good 10 or 12 feet uh, distance uh, just by looking through this glass. It's very helpful. I've been using it for years. The other thing that I always do, and most painters that I know, at least figure painters, uh, I have a mirror directly behind me that all I have to do is turn around and look in the mirror uh, and look at my painting. What this does is by switching your brain from right to left, reversing the image that you see, uh, for some reason it, it uh, shines, uh, an, uh, it, 
it shows you the, the image that you're working on from, from an alternate perspective. And it is surprising how any distortions in the, in the image that you're working on, uh, especially when you work close like I do, uh, become readily apparent when you reverse the image by looking in the mirror. When you flip it, it, uh, it brings out any distortions in, in uh, proportion or uh, uh, just general appearance. The idea of what you want as you're approaching the, the, uh, the painting is when you're looking at it, the mirror and you're looking at it uh, face on, is you want the same feel. You don't want to feel that there's any, any uh, exchange of, uh, of appearance, of proportion especially. And uh, you'll find it very, very helpful. A lot of painters accidentally stumble upon this process. I know I did. I thought I, I thought I was the person who actually invented the whole idea, but I find out that everybody else thinks the same thing. Um, anyway, try it because it's terrific. You don't necessarily need it so much when you're doing landscapes or seascapes or, or something that doesn't demand such uh, exactness and proportion, but you'll find it very, very helpful when it comes to painting portraits or painting figures or anything like that. Anyway, that's pretty much it in terms of material other than the little piece of stick charcoal that I'm going to be starting with here. That's just about it. So um, I think we'll end that portion of it right there.